What is up, YouTube fam? Your boy is back on the grind one more time. It is a few days later after my previous upload uh, on the weekend here on Sunday, and we are now attacking the uh, the Willwood rear brake kit for a Ford 9-inch. Now, as my community post stated, um, I would like to have said it was easy, but it wasn't that easy. Uh, it was bolt-on, or it is bolt-on, but being that this four nine inch rear end is i believe it's actually like an original one out of like an older uh ford um it's not a quick performance it's not a curry or anything like that so some of the tolerances and things like that where the ro rotor needs to be uh in between the caliper was not uh correct and it took a little bit of ingenuity and trial and error and some mistakes that i made because i was thinking different things uh, would work for it and it didn't and I got them on so I'm, I'm hoping that this will work but what I want to do is show this to you guys so that way if you do find like an older four nine inch or something like that uh, you will probably come across these type of issues because being that uh, quick performance and those type of companies make these and they make these to adapt to the Willwood uh, brake kit system or they or they come with them uh, from what I assume I don't know um if you do this aftermarket style where you're trying to adapt new parts to an old rear end uh it might not be the same so uh definitely keep this in mind you guys because i had learned the hard way however i will say that everything bolted up and everything is on there uh nicely uh, the adapters and everything that they sent bolted right up it's just the little bitty tolerances that uh made the difference that i had to overcome so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and turn this camera around and show you guys uh, that way we can get down and busy so let me go ahead and flip this camera around if you're new to the channel definitely think about subscribing hit that notification bell all that good stuff you guys i'm restored a 1971 chevelle from the ground up if you've been following me you know what it is if not stay tuned because this chevelle we're going in on it trying to get it ready by my wedding all right so here we go all right you guys so i'm going to take you down here first and show you now it is in there and i will say it is looking pretty dang sweet uh i painted those uh letters orange to match uh the uh the the small accents of orange that's on the car but uh she's in there so that ring there uh is also an adapter to make the uh a uh, hub center portion of the rotor fit nice and flush so it won't move around. Uh, I'll try to get some good angles on it the best that I can, but as you can see, she is in there and that we're in painted looking really good and there's already dust on it. It's crazy. Uh, so like I said, for the most part, it went on really good. I got the emergency brake kit one uh, that uh, comes with this, so that's why this rotor is probably a little bit uh, wider, uh, but the emergency brake comes all assembled and that goes on first and then you put the uh the axle on and then you put uh the rotor on well then you put that adapter ring on and then you put the rotor on and then you mount this to it and there's two bolts in the back that one from the top right there and i don't know if you guys can see it but there's one right behind it below and then that mounts uh to it and then you're good to go it's actually really simple and an easy install now where i had the trouble was they tell you to look right down in here and there's supposed to be an even amount of space on both sides of the rotor so you can see that small space in between the rotor and the caliper right there and see how it's pretty even i know my hand is unsteady so it might not look like it but it's it's pretty even right now well when i first st installed it this rotor was touching this part of the caliper and i was like what the heck and i thought that it might have been like movement in the axle because on this one, and I don't know if all four nine inches are the same, but there is a slight little bit of play. I'm talking like maybe an eighth of an inch or less uh, shifting this axle kind of in and out. Now, I don't know if that's normal or not, um, but I'm hoping that is okay. Um, it might be because I don't have any C-clips in here. I don't think these actually ever come with C-clips, or they, or at least this one doesn't. Uh, so that way it makes it easy to slide in and out. And you have that plate that's holding the axle in. So I guess it wouldn't really matter. So um, anyways, so that just baffled me. So I was thinking, well, well, what could be causing that uh, kind of offset? So then I thought about this ring. And then looking at the ring, 
there's actually this portion here and then there's a lip behind it and it actually extends out to about right here. I thought that maybe that amount behind it was making the rotor stick out and it was pushing it out. So then that's why I had this rotor touching the inside of the caliper. Well, fast forward a little bit, I take off the ring and then I grind it all that down to kind of make it flush. So that way I could see if I could maybe push the rotor on further. Well, to make a long story short, and then a lot of dust in here later from that aluminum, I found out that of course, Willwood, being Willwood, made provisions <laughs> on the back of the rotor. There's like a little step lip in the back to actually compensate for the adapter. So then it's all flush. That way the rotor won't stick out. And I didn't even think about that until I was trying to test fit it after I ground it down and I looked behind it and then sure enough, that's what it was. So that wasn't the issue. So what I ended up coming to to not make this too long is there is an adapter that sits right where those washers are. You see where those washers are right there? So I have six washers right there and there's six more down there and there's six more down there on that bottom bolt. Um, on these little Allen keys. So there's a little spacer that sits, that's supposed to sit there and it's just one piece. And I don't, obviously the spacer is made um, to a certain spec in order to kind of keep that rotor centered in between that caliper. Well, that spacer ended up being too much for this particular setup. So I don't know if my flange right here, where the flange kind of sits next to uh, the uh, axle housing is like thicker, or maybe the hub is wider or something is just off on the nine inch. I'm not sure, I don't know what, because I did everything to try to make, this, make sure this sit flush and it does. I even looked down the other, holes here and I mean there's no there's no space behind that you guys so what I did is I unbolted all of these allen little bolts there and, and I thought well maybe if I can kind of take some of that space away then it would bump the uh, the caliper down because they actually come with shims because you're supposed to be able to shim the caliper uh so that way the the rotor um sits centered in there I took that spacer out I went to ace and got some of these these washers and i came to find out what well, you can stack eight of these washers right here and they sit flush like i'm talking super level next to the spacer so i put uh, six of those washers on each of those bolts and Sure enough, it centered it right up. I even took it off like two other times. It kind of, I took a washer out. I added a washer in just to kind of be sure. And six was like the sweet spot. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take it to a machine shop and see if they can use like a lathe or something like that, uh, a mill or something to kind of like shave it down uh, the amount that I need. And then I can just kind of repaint it and put it back on. So um, hopefully this is some great information for you guys. I don't know if this is my particular setup, but for some reason I always have the smallest, tiniest issues to try to overcome and it makes an hour job four or five hours long, man. This is crazy. It always happens to me. I'm not sure why, but I'm always able to figure it out. It just takes me that much longer. So hoping I get thrown a bone here <laughs> And a lot of other things go a little bit smoother. So anyways, I don't mean to talk your ear off um, in regards to that. But it's definitely something that you guys should know if you are trying to adapt the new Wheelwood Big Ford rear brake system to an older style Ford 9-inch setup. So uh, that's that. Now I'm going to take you over here. Now, uh, this is my axle on this side. As you can see, nothing is done right here. Uh, I have it all wrapped up so no dust or anything gets on uh, the bearings or anything. But um, also, too, this is another big deal. The four 9 inches from Quick Performance and all those, the newer 9 inches, come with provisions, like a bigger hole, in order to access the four bolts. Right here, right here, right here, right here. That are supposed to hold this uh, axle and this whole assembly on. 
Well, being that this is older, it doesn't. Also, being that it's a drum setup, it was originally a drum setup, as you can see down there, uh, the the hub actually set out far enough that you can actually reach the uh, the uh, bolts and the nuts for, with a ratchet or with a uh, at least a wrench from in between the hub and the uh, the front of the drum. And so that way it made it easy to access. But now that I have the disc brake set up, everything's a lot tighter and there was no, no, no way I was able to even fit a wrench, a socket, nothing in between there, you guys. So what I had to do <laughs> is this axle hub here came with uh, two different, I'm assuming two different um, lug patterns. And so what I did is I, is I used a hole for the other lug pattern that wasn't used and I, I just drilled it out to like an inch wide that way the uh, the half inch uh, socket and my extension would fit in there and I'll be good to go. And actually that was perfect. It actually looks dang near professional. <laughs> so um, that's what I need to do right now while I have a little bit of daylight uh, left. all cleaned up and everything got all the shavings off uh, double triple triple quadruple cleaned it and I also double triple quadruple checked I was uh, drilling into the right hole which I was I actually marked all my other uh, holes for the wheel lugs to go in so I just definitely wanted to make sure I was drilling in the right one so I actually did pretty good that actually looks kind of factory so uh, did really well I used a Harbor Freight step drill and then that only lasted so long actually it lasted the other one and this one until I got to the very end so then I had to use my handy dandy one from Lowe's Irwin brand man I've had that thing for like shoot I don't know how long many many years and it's still doing the job so um, yeah that finished it out and we good to go y'all so we are in here now and i am about to assemble this i was just gonna time lapse it but uh i thought a, a little semi step by step uh wouldn't be a bad idea so i'm just squirting some a little bit of this gear oil in here just for just like the little bit that i've lost and so i probably only lost a few squirts of it this is the uh the brake assembly right here. Yeah, so this is it right here. Um, this is the emergency brake kit. This is the one that I wanted. And since this car is equipped with emergency brakes, yeah, so I wanted emergency brakes on it, so that's why. So that actually just bolts onto these four bolts right here. This is what keeps the hub, the whole hub assembly on. So, probably fairly hard to tell, but that's there so they just kind of just bolt right on there and then you have a this plate here now willwood supplies you with a plate but it has like this provision this lip right here however with the old school gm it does not work um, because when you when you put this uh this piece on there this part right here doesn't allow the actual backing plate or retaining plate to sit flush against that uh that bearing or what have you that holds on the axle so i'm actually just going to use the original one so let me go ahead and put this axle in tight quarters in here you guys we are making it happen
We are making it happen. Okay. All right, y'all, so we back. All right, so, so yeah, so it has this retaining plate, but again, that lip won't allow it to set flush. So this is the one that it came with. Uh, like I said, the different variances and tolerances that it, uh, it's going to have from something that's remanufactured new, they're going to account for probably all this old stuff that does not, um, um, you know, make it fit as good as it probably should. So uh, when I have had mounted it before, I had some RTV on it. So I'm just taking that off. But yeah, so this is flat. So you can see already where it kind of sat on that little... Uh, bearing cover or whatever it's called there and it presses it and it keeps that uh axle up and on there so, so it's tight quarters in here you guys so i gotta and i mean tight quarters i mean behind here <laughs> boom there we go of course i got pushed out the way all right i hope you guys can see okay i actually put an led up on this side Something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, so I have it hanging right above us. Oh, yes. So you see, I had to drill this hole, and the new ones come with that provision. Well, these ones don't. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not going to sit here and mess with this, because there would be no way you can get any tools or anything like that. I even have a one of those little uh, swivel adjustable like little uh wrenches that the arm swivels and you can't even get that in there that's how i got the old setup in but you can't you, there's no way you're getting that in here all right so i got these little new nuts with uh nylons on there uh, so that way it won't back out but they do suggest you put red loctite on there so this is kind of like double assurance for me Oh, you know what? This might be the wrong. This is actually the wrong size. Yep, it's the wrong size, damn it. Ah. All right, you guys, so what I have to do is temporarily install this. I guess I must have been thinking now I was only gonna get four of these nuts, the nylon nuts for the passenger side. And maybe I was just going to see how it worked and then just come back later to get the other ones just in case. Because this is what it came with. Uh, but just for a little bit of extra security, I wanted the nylon uh, uh, nuts on them with the red Loctite. Um, so I thought I had all eight, but I guess I only got four, which means I don't have all eight. And I'd have to go to the store and I actually have to leave in about an hour to go to work. So what I'm going to do is just kind of temporarily install these on. for now 24 hours later all right y'all it is the next day and i had to stop yesterday just because i ran out of time and then i didn't have the the uh the uh, nuts for the little t-bolts back here that i wanted and then overnight i just decided just to kind of just go with the um the regular ones that came with it the the uh nuts that i got with it are or uh, ones with nylon, uh, little lockers on the end of them. Um, but I think these T-bolts here that hold the axle in and this whole assembly in place is supposed to be torqued down to about 35 foot-pounds. I did not trust torquing those nuts down that tight just because they're just kind of like that soft uh, aluminum or whatever they make uh, that those uh, nuts out of. So these right here seem a little bit more uh, heavy-duty and what came on the car at least. So I'm assuming they might be grade eight, I'm not sure. But uh, I feel a little bit better about using those. So what I'm gonna do is just, I have washers back there behind them anyway. I'm just gonna put some Loctite on them and just torque them down to spec. Uh, so that's pretty much where we're at today. Uh, I got everything bolted on yesterday and everything looks good. It's the same situation <laughs> as the other side where this spacer right here is the culprit. Uh, there's a guy that I follow on YouTube 
Uh, his name is Saab Kyle or something like that. Um, has crazy amount of followers, like over a million followers, but he does all car content. And he's also restoring a Chevelle and he's also has a four nine inch. I think he just has one from, from Quick Performance. And he also came across the same issue with that dang spacer. And that's even on a new setup. So uh, I don't know y'all, I don't know if that's some sort of maybe design flaw. Maybe there's, they're, maybe they're just using a universal spacer for uh, the A bodies or something. I'm not quite sure because he had to take his off and have it milled down as well, and then he was good to go. Um, also, he did have some issues with his coilover setup, and that's also the same uh, that I might have as well, just because the coilover comes with a relocation bracket. Instead of mounting the uh, coilover at the original uh, post and position where the uh, shot goes in the original one, it relocates it over here, and you can see how you have the uh, exhaust in the way. So I don't know. Um, I have a solution. We'll see kind of how that goes. That'll be attacked here probably this weekend. I'll probably try to install the coilovers, at least just mock them up. Uh, but yeah, y'all. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and finish this here. So I'm going to try to time lapse it the best I can. y'all so i wanted to at least show you this part here so i have the uh, the bracket assembly on that holds the caliper i have the six washers because that's the correct spacing uh, that i'm going to need at least on that side so we're going to see if it matches on this side as well uh and again i have the six washers in there just kind of temporarily um and i use the washers to mimic the spacing or find out what spacing i need and um six washers was exactly what i needed and Again, this was like eight washers thick, which is these washers right here, these little grade aid washers right here. So um, so I'm hoping that it is the case for this side as well. Uh, once this is all down, I torqued the uh, retaining plate bolts inside there to actually just 23 foot pounds, man. And I was like, I was uh, gently doing that. I had found some information where those bolts are supposed to be torqued down to 35 foot pounds. And I was like, that's kind of a lot. It's, it seemed like to me at least. And then when I was in there tightening them, I was like, man, 20 is like pushing it <laughs> right now. So I just kind of went to 23 and just, and just uh, put some red Loctite on it. So hopefully it don't, it don't come yeah. after ring on. And that goes right here. And again, this allows it to sit flush on the hub so it doesn't bounce up and down. And then it has provisions for it to sit flat in there. So go ahead and put this on here boom and this part right here is exactly the diameter that fits right flush inside of my wheel and then now it's time to put the wheelwood caliper on and go ahead put this thing on also these rotors are directional there is a arrow right here that says up it points towards the front of the car so that way you know what direction this rotor is supposed to spin so let me go ahead and mount this up. So let me go ahead and tighten this down. So I'm just snugging this all up for now. But I do want to make it somewhat tight so that way I get the correct spacing that I need. I had to order me some new ones too for my wheels. So I ordered some just like these. I tried to find them in black, but... They were hard to find, so. All right, let's see. All right, you guys, so I got my wheel out here, and man, it's tight. Tight, tight, tight. I ain't got no room. I need a bigger garage. And I just got a bigger garage. 
But we're going to see if this wheel uh, clears this uh, upper portion of the, um, the wheel well here. So I tried to lower it down so I didn't have to like lift it up as high, but let's see if this will work. Heavy ass wheel. <laughs> All right, whoo, man. So the other side hit, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one on for now, see kind of how it fits temporarily, then I'm gonna put the other wheel on on that side and then we'll see what it looks like. One thing I hate too, I hate when the uh, inside of the, uh, where the lug nut goes in here, I hate how sometimes those are all scratched up, especially when I see people with like these really expensive ass wheels and I'm like, man, y'all can't put no tape or anything. I actually won, um, and I should use that actually. I won a set of sockets that are for really nice wheels and it has some sort of, I don't know, some sort of plastic or something like that around the edges so it doesn't scrape so i might actually go use that i forgot about those actually let me put my brake pads in there see what those look like now i'm sure it probably won't change anything but probably should have just left them in well they went in so as long as they're sliding in i really don't know why I moves like that all right i'm gonna go do the other side and then i'll throw that wheel on and then i'll chime back in when both wheels are on Ooh, look at that hold on let's see oh man that wheel wood back there looking good all right y'all so she is finally in there it is all done the install is all done and the wheels are installed uh it's not totally done yet because i still have to do uh, one other thing with this side here, but it's pretty much installed. Uh, I just wanted to check the fitment of the wheels because, again, they say the disc brakes give it a, a push it out about a quarter of an inch or so when you go from drum to disc. And uh, sure enough, it did, uh, at least on my uh, particular application. Uh, a buddy of mine said that his actually gained space, so he had to use a spacer to push his wheels back out. Uh, but mine was not the case. And it also could be to, I went with a wider tire because I wanted to uh, keep the tire flush with the wheel. And if I didn't do that, if I went with like a 285 or something, this probably would have been stretched a little bit and I probably would have cleared. But the reason why I have the tape on there is because I had to trim a little bit up above here to get it to come down. And it's probably good that I did it anyway, just because just so I don't have any other issues um, down the road or if I went with a different rim or or just with the car kind of flexing, you know, left to right, things like that. So uh, it's probably better that I did anyway. All I have to do is grind everything down and make everything smooth because right now there's just some sharp edges on there. I just wanted to get it far enough down where I could just fit the tire here real quick and then I can clean up everything later. Uh, so everything in there is just kind of temporarily installed, but you get the idea of what that looks like yeah man that looks really really good in there y'all really good that willwood orange yeah that sets it off for sure and i think that black stuff actually burns off um, eventually but we're kind of where we're at on this so uh, i think i'm gonna go ahead and kind of just put everything back together i'm gonna take this wheel back off man who knows how many times i've had this wheel on and off on and off, on and off this car. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the other side. All right, you guys, so this might be a little bit better look here for you. Let me see if I can get you a good angle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Man, that's looking real, real nice in there. I like that tuckage. Now, what I have in there right now is I don't have my coilovers, so I'm hoping the coilovers will actually drop it a little bit more. 
Because what I plan to do is take the full advantage or the full range of the lowering uh, potential of the coil lowers because I would like it to sit uh, a, a little bit lower if I could. If I could have it like drop below the lip just slightly or just at the lip, that would be perfect. Right now it's just kind of hovering just above uh, that lip. So I could, if I could have it just dropped a little bit more, I think that'll be a good, good look, you guys. Get in the comments, y'all. Let me know what you guys think. Man, it looks really good. Let's see if I can get that Willwood in there. I don't know if you guys can see that Willwood. Oh, man, yeah. So for some reason on both sides is perfectly blocked. But anyways, you guys get the picture. Let's see. Yeah, see? Yeah. But yeah, y'all, that's gonna conclude the Willwood install. Uh, I tried to do my best to do somewhat of a step-by-step, -step, but with time being so limited, you guys, and I'm just trying to just do what I can to get the car done and get you guys content and uh, stay committed to my my daily grind, then, um, you know, I have to do what I have to do. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I mean, it's really, really simple, actually, for the most part. Like I said, just take out the axle, and then if you get the emergency brake kit, then you have to put the emergency brake uh, hole assembly on first, and then put on the um, the uh, axle right behind it, then put the retaining plate on, and then just torque it down and you're good to go. So um, that's really it. And then, you know, just put on the rotor, and then I uh, put on the caliper, and then make sure that that uh, rotor is just centered in there so you can put the, uh, the brake pads in, and then you're set, man. So um, pretty simple. I mean, there's tons and tons of videos on actually kind of how to do it, um, but really simple. So hopefully I kind of gave you guys the, at least the... Uh, the basics on how to install, especially coming from an older uh, four nine inch uh, to the new stuff. Um, hopefully that'll give you guys some insights on, on what to do. So if you find an, an old four nine inch in a junkyard or somebody gave it to you for cheap, then you can do this upgrade uh, pretty much with uh, no issue, so to speak. But uh, anyways, my other issues lie within the wheels because I went from drum to disc and then it messed up with the offset and all that stuff. So. Anyways, it is what it is. But if you're new to the channel, definitely think about subscribing, y'all. Hit the notification bell, all that good stuff, y'all. My name is Mr. Griffin23. Gonna conclude this video. Sorry this video is technically kind of late because I was gonna upload Wednesday, Wednesdays and Saturdays, and or Sundays uh, is my upload days. But if I can't get one on Wednesday, I'll definitely get one to you by the weekend. But stay tuned, you guys, for more, more to come. I think what I'm gonna do this weekend is attack the Viking coilover kit. And uh, it's looking like I won't be able to run the relocation bracket that they sent. So I'm going to have to go a different route. But you guys stay tuned for that. All right. Mr. Griffin 23, out of here.